What's up, YouTube? It's been a long time. Hey, thanks for hanging with me, and thanks for understanding that I don't post videos all that often. You know, I looked back, and I seem to be posting about one video a year. Just one! I decided I was gonna post a new video, and this is actually a two-parter. This first part is going to be about making classic pipes. And the second part? Well, that's gonna be on showing you how to make that classic pipe. Classic pipes. Why should you care? I mean, You've got all these beautiful freehand shapes out there. They follow the grain beautifully. The shapes just flow. And then you look at these classic pipes, these billiards, Dublins. I mean, it looks like something, I don't know, your grandfather would smoke. So why should you care about those? I mean, honestly, they're not as interesting, right? Well, let me tell you, my favorite pipes are classic pipes. Whether you're a fan of pipes, use them, or you make them, isn't there more freedom for expressing yourself in this piece of wood without all the restrictions placed on it by a classic shape? So the first thing I want to talk to you about is why you should care about classic pipes. The second thing I want to show you is how you lay out classic pipes within a block of briar. But before we continue with this discussion, I need a cup of coffee. Now that I'm caffeinated, I want to take a look at item number one. Why should you care about classic pipes? There are a lot of reasons for that. One, you just might like the way they look. I'm one of those people. These designs have been around for hundreds of years, or at least over a hundred years. And the designs are good. I mean, they wouldn't last this long if they were not good. I mean, think about some of the crazy shapes that we might have seen throughout the years. You might have seen pictures on the internet or in some books. and if there are only a few examples of them, one, maybe the shape was too difficult to execute uh, with some kind of regularity, or two, maybe it's just not a good shape. But classic pipes, they just have balance. They're beautiful when they're executed properly. One of my favorites is the billiard, or the longer shanked version of that, the lavat. What I like about the shape is that it's very well balanced visually, and if it's executed well, it's well balanced in terms of how it feels in your mouth. That's critical to me because I am a clencher. And so when I have the pipe in my teeth, it's almost like nothing is there at all. But another thing that classic pipes let you do is to appreciate your pipe heritage. When you look back through pipe catalogs over the last hundred years or so, those are all classic pipes. I mean, they were made in factories, and classic pipes are designed the way they are because they were made to be turned in large quantities on lathes. When you have a classic pipe, you are tying yourself into that heritage. You're part of pipe history, in a way. Another thing that's really important, uh, for pipe makers especially, is that you have to have a solid foundation in classics, or you should have a solid foundation in classic design and execution if you are going to make freehand pipes. The reason is the same as it is for craftspeople and artists in multiple different mediums. It's that if you don't understand the rules, you don't know how to break them. A lot of freehand pipe makers, the ones who don't have a solid foundation in classic pipe design and execution, you can tell this has to do with balance, this has to do with the execution of specific details of the pipes, and this has to do with designing a pipe that is meant to be used. And one of the other reasons that I suggest that all pipe makers get a solid foundation in the classics is that it requires discipline. So many pipe makers want to just step right into the freehand realm, want to test their metal by shaping these crazy shapes and showing that yes, I too can shape a blowfish, but the thing is that anybody can do that. And if the shape is freeform anyway, there are no rules. If there are no rules, then how can you judge whether it's good or bad? But if you want to refine your ability, you need to get a solid foundation in the basic skills. And there's no better way to do that than studying the classics. 
Sure, you could slap a billiard in any block of briar in any direction you want, but to really lay out a billiard inside a block of briar takes a lot of time to select the correct block, to find the one out of a hundred that will make those rings perfectly run around the bowl, that will make the straight grain run up the sides. That doesn't happen on every block of briar. So more than a decade ago, I was studying with a Danish master pipe maker, Tony Nielsen. Tani told me that there were only two shapes in every block of briar. There's a Dublin and a volcano. And what he meant by that is that the grain in briar runs like this. If the grain of the pipe radiates from the center out, then the lines of a Dublin line up perfectly with the pattern that is in every block of briar, or in most blocks of briar. Now, if you flip the block over, a Dublin flipped over is basically a volcano shape. It's radiating the op opposite direction. If the grain is radiating the opposite direction, then it should flow down the sides of a volcano shape. Now, if you take a billiard shape, it more resembles a volcano than it does a Dublin. That means to properly lay out a billiard in a block of briar means that we need to invert the block, put the plateau down. That will allow the grain to radiate from the top down and around the bowl. A lot of factories, you'll see, don't do this, and a lot of artisan pipe makers don't either. You'll see perfect straight grain on the front of the bowl, and maybe even on some of the sides, but it radiates out the back to bird's eye. Well, that's because the block has not been inverted. Of course, we can make this a whole lot easier by putting it in a cross-cut block, but that takes all the fun out of this. And so that is how you find a billiard inside a block of briar. It takes a lot of time, and you might have to have a larger selection of briar to be able to lay out a perfect straight grain. But if you play with the lines of the billiard, maybe make it come out a little more or more straight-sided, you'll find a little more success. You can fit the shape to the blocks of briar that you have. Now that's all I have for you this time. But if you tune in next time, I'm gonna take this very block of briar and show you how I make a billiard from start to finish. Thanks so much for watching. I really do hope this was helpful and happy carving.